In the previous video, I showed you how to correct the hues coming straight out of the tube in order to do a scientific study of the relationship of values and intensities. Now we're going to show you how to build a chart. All right, we're going to follow the same procedure that we followed with our with our scientific studies of blues and oranges. Now that we've made the adjustments that we need to make, we're ready to go. So step two is place the darkest darks and the lightest lights in the highest intensities. So what that means is that we're going to go to purple first. And the highest intensity, even though it doesn't feel like a high intensity, it's the darkest darks. No darkest dark has a real high intensity. But this this darkest dark has more purple in it, has all the purple in it that, um, well, let's say it has all purple in it, even though it's so very, very dark. Because of the pigment that it's made of, it has all the purple in it that we'll need, be, we'll need in order to neutralize the yellow. All right, so that's the darkest dark of the purple. Now we'll go and get the lightest light of the purple. And we'll do that. I'm going to do that with the palette knife. We'll pull white on the palette first. Put right down here. Pull just a little bit of that. Purple is a very strong color. We want it really the lightest value. Or the lightest value that we can still read purple in. So we'll put just a little bit of that. Pull just a little bit of that uh, mixture of purple we got from our previous session. And let's see. We want it just to have a little bit, maybe a little bit more hue. I was comparing it with the value of the uh, of the paper there. Just a little bit more hue. And I think that probably will probably do it right there. So, paint that in the lightest corner of the highest intensity, which is right here. Uh, this is the value line. This um, this column is the value. And then this is the, the um, saturation line. So here we go. There is that's as I put that on, that seems to be too dark. So that's the thing about working with purple. It does really go very dark. And so, so this particular one, dioxazine purple plus a mixture of ultramarine blue, is um, so strong that we really have to watch what happens. Don't just mix it and throw it on there. If you want to do a real scientific study where you're really learning from it and really controlling the colors, I'm just going to pick it up with a brush and do this. Um, don't settle for just what goes on there. Control it so that you can learn from it um, for, uh, so that it will inform your painting experience when you, uh, when you actually are applying these principles. All right, now. The, we'll go to the darkest dark and lightest light of the highest intensities first. So I'm going to rinse the brush off and I'll go to the darkest darks and the lightest lights of the high intensities of yellow. Now that's kind of a <laughs> kind of a, a, a non-truth within a truth because yellow within itself is a high, uh, the lightest yellow is a high intensity but yellow is of a characteristic as it gets darker its intensity gets less and less and less. But nevertheless, because this is the darkest yellow, uh, this is the raw umber, as I uh, uh, explained in the previous session, this is the darkest yellow, um, or one among the darkest yellows that we can, that we have. So, this is then, even though it says highest intensity, that's just telling you what column that one belongs to. It's not complete neutral. Um, if we if we fan it out just a little bit, we can see his little color there. Now we want to go to the highest, high, uh, the the lightest value of of that color, and that is in in this case I'm using Hansel Yellow Light, as I explained in the previous session. So this is Hansel, Hansel Yellow Light, which goes right here. Now what the the goal here is for this light and this light to be the same value. So as I squint, as I squint, there, this may be just a slight, slightly bit darker. Let's call that in the same value range. Now, so we've got those placed. We follow this kind of logic because if we have the darks here and the lights here, 
we can more easily control the degree of value to get the middle values in, in these ranges and also to get the neutrals here. So that's the reason it works better to, to, to put the extremes on first and then work towards the center. So the next step is to place the middle value, uh, the middle values of the highest intensity second. So we will do that now. I'm going to do that with the brush. The middle values of the highest intensities next. So that means I can go here either way. I can go here and just gradually pull a little bit of this. Remember, it's a very strong color, so it's going to change value really, really quick. But what I want, just as we showed you when we were working with blue and orange, what I want is a value that sits halfway between, that visually sits halfway between the darkest dark and the lightest light. And so sometimes that may take a little bit of adjusting. So I'll put that down and I just gauge it. Does it seem, is it leaning a little bit more towards this? Is it leaning a little more towards that? Or is it sitting kind of halfway in between? Another way I can taste, test this is to go to the grayscale or, or value finder. And I can just simply do this. And you see, that's pretty much a middle value. So it's sitting, doing pretty well uh, for sitting in between the lightest light we have here and the darkest dark we have there. So that's the value I'm working with right there. Now I'll need to be sure I've got, be sure I keep my location of there because uh, I'll need to be doing some mixing with that later on. Now, and then I go to between these two and do the same thing. Now I already have my middle value mixed for the, uh, for the yellow. Explained how that worked in our previous session. So all I have to do there is simply go into this mixture and apply it here. Now, I, as I watch, I'm going to also just watch and see, does that feel, does it feel halfway between visually? Does it feel halfway? It feels like me, it's leaning a little bit more towards that, leaning a little bit more towards this, and so I'm going to check it and see. Does that really give me a middle value? Ah, that's a little bit darker. Can you see? A little bit darker than middle value. Now, what do I do with that? I just simply add a little yellow into it. So I didn't have it quite middle value. Just add a little yellow into that right there. Let's see. Let's see if I can paint over that. There we go. Right in there. A little bit more yellow into it because we want that to be middle value. Is it still leaning a little bit more towards the dark? Let's see. It feels it might be. Let's check it again with the value finder. These little value finders are wonderful. That's quite, that pretty much blends. Yes, that's pretty much middle value. So we can leave that there. Now we have placed the middle value of the highest intensities and we're ready to continue. The next step is to go for the darkest dark, the lightest light, and the middle value of the neutral. So here we go. Can we get a full value range of complete neutrals with these colors? We should be able to because we did the hue correction in, in our previous session. And so now it's just a matter of mixing them. So here we go. I'll pull, right here's the darkest dark. Go there first. Just going to pull that right here to be sure. Now you, it's hard to see because they look black, don't they? They really look black. But let's see. By mixing these two into each other, and if I put it here, I can see there's a little bit more purple in that. So that, keeping in mind, that purple is very, very strong. So I need to pull more of this raw umber into that purple. So this is developing uh, your, your visual perception when you can put a stroke on there and you can see behind that stroke what you have. That seems to me to be closer to it. That should be completely black, almost black. And I think it probably is very close to almost black right there. All right, now I want to go for the lightest light of that. Well, let's just go right here. Well, actually, there's a better, there's a better way to do that. That's a better way to do that, to keep the, everything consistent. We could have added white to that, but let's don't do it that way. Let's do it this way. 
because there might be times when you're working say with uh, uh, purple flowers or you might be working with yellow flowers and you'll see a neutral color in there. You might see an actual gray depending on how the light's shining. If you know that you can take this and this and make it neutral then that's that's the way to think. So this would, I could take that do this but that would be cheating. We need to be sure that these colors are going to neutralize each other. So I'll come down into here the color that I mixed for that and I'll go over into the handsome yellow light and then pull the color into here until I get that so that I don't see any more color in it. When it fills, there we go, right in there. When it fills, no longer can see any color in it. There it is, I believe, right there. Yes, that's pretty close. That's still a little bit yellow, so I'll put a little bit more of that purple mixture into it. Keep working it. Keep working it, and that will give me, there's the go, there it is, right there. That's that neutral. That's uh, almost, let's pull this over here and see. There we go, right in there. That in, mm-hmm, very good. Now, uh, let's get the middle value of that. To get the middle value of that, I'm going to also do the same thing, or similar thing, with those middle value colors. I'm going to actually take those middle, middle value colors and create that neutral. So let's get this right here. Pull it right over here in this middle value one. Keep a little bit more of it right in here. A little bit more right in here. Keep working it. Keep working it. Keep working it. Do I have it? Almost have it. Almost have it. Let's see. Is that it? Still, That's still leaning a little bit more towards yellow. So I'll need to create, there we go, right in there. Should be, should be very, very close. Well, that one, so that means it still doesn't have enough blue in it. I didn't get that quite adjusted enough. I'm going to pull a little bit of the old green blue over here. Adjust it. So that's the thing that's wanky about uh, you about being able to to create neutrals of these two colors, because we don't we're, because of the the yellow the craziness of that yellow. Uh, we have to make adjustments as we move along. That should do it. Let's see if it does. Yeah, there we go, right there. That's pretty close to to neutral. So um, if it seems too orange, you add blue. You always add the complement to make that adjustment. Now let's see. Let's go here with our grayscale. There we go. It's pretty close. It's more like on, on that side. It's pretty close. Maybe still a little bit warm, but close enough. All right, so uh, now we have the uh, now we have the, the the three mixtures of the neutrals. These are complete neutrals in there. Then the next step is to complete the value scale of the high intensities. Then the neutrals. So here's how we'll do that. Com complete the value scale. We we'll go into the high intensities. <clears throat> right here, we need to to register a high intensity purple that sits visually in the value range between these two. And we can, we can just go right over here, pull this purple mixture into this, and begin to visually compare. If I visually compare, you see I'm, I'm too close to this. I need a little bit more of the purple in there. Visually compare. Let's see. Put a little mark right there. There we go. Now, that still, visually, that still seems to me it's leaning a little bit more towards this middle. Don't settle for second best. Don't just plot one on there. You're controlling here. Science, when you're doing something scientifically, that means that you're controlling it. And uh, so if you're controlling it scientifically, you don't want to just settle. 
And now, now it's leaning a little bit more towards that. So see, play. You have to play with it for a while. Let's go. We'll pick up a little bit more of that white. Sort of barely tint it just a little bit. Now, you know what's happening. It seems to me now to be being closer to sitting in between value-wise. Now, value-wise, this is the high intensity of purple. Value-wise, it seems to be because it may be feet, pulling a little feet a little bit more, leaning a little bit more towards dark. Let me just sort of make a tiny adjustment there. There we go. Now, it doesn't take much. Still might be leaning a little bit more towards the dark. So, we work these things patiently. All right, now. All right, that. That that's this kind of jumping back and forth, so that's good enough. Now we're going to go and get the same thing going on here between the middle value. Uh, we we'll call that mid light. We're going between the middle value and the lightest value of that purple. So I'll just continue this, picking up the white here, putting it beside the purple here, and just pulling color in there and test it. Test it. Where is it? All right, now you can see it's 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 almost the same as this, more white. Test it. Now it's getting. Let's see, is that going to do it? Does that sit in between those two, value-wise? Okay, I believe it does. Let's say that's the way you do that is you 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 allow your visual your vision. To tell you what you're seeing. Now it may be being leaning a little bit more towards that. Maybe it needs to just a little bit lighter. Because it can change in just a little bit. And sometimes just a little bit of value difference will make all the difference in the world as how something is interpreted. Still leaning maybe just a little bit more towards that. Patience. Patience. Just pull that color through there and lighten it up. Okay. Now, this the purple is a is a tricky one to work with when you're creating value scales because well especially this particular purple because I've said before it is such a strong tinting strength strong color there we go there we go that is kind of have, that's good enough almost <laughs> I said good enough now it begins to lean more towards this visually after a while you just uh, if, if it's uh, somewhere, if it's this close, there we go, that's closer. So what we're looking for is, ex it, the, it is, a, it is a, the same, I'm trying to say, the same degree of difference between this and this, this and this, this and this, and this and this. Okay, we're going to do the same thing on the other side. All right, now we have these two here. So what I'm going to do is to pull this into this, pull the the the, the uh, Rossi raw uh, umber into the Rossi in a mixture. Let's see. Yes, just a little bit more of that, then we should get those. That should pretty pretty much value-wise. This is value now. Remember, we're working towards the value. Now, one thing that I must point out here is that even though this is the value of yellow as I said before it's also changing in intensity yellow does that as it moves into shadow so that's pretty good as far as the degree of value um, so there you might say that as things move into shadow they do as all things as all things move into shadow the intensity gets lower saturation is less but when we can put together uh, scientific studies like this, it can tell us how of what we can do in order to, uh, to paint that the way we're seeing it, to know what to do with it. Now this will, be, this will come down towards the light. This will be kind of low light. We'll mix this and move into this and get that in between. What, yellow, what happens to this particular yellow in low light? And that would be... A little bit little, leaning a little bit more towards this value wise so you're training your visual perception when you're doing exercises like this now you might say you don't need to do it but you can just watch me do it and you'll know what to do try it and see 
actually you can watch me do it and you can understand it but until you actually try it you won't have the experience to inform what you do when you're actually painting all right that's pretty close to to a good value scale that goes from the lightest light to the darkest dark in the highest intensity of yellow and as a value scale that goes here from the lightest light to the darkest dark in the highest intensity of purple so let's get that neutral going into a value scale And that's probably easy enough to do. Uh, let's see here. Just uh, in this case, I believe we can just use the neutral we have right here. Use a little bit more of this into it. Okay, we'll need that to go lighter. So I'm 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 pulling colors. Uh, Pulling between the, the the yellow and and the purple. Let's see how that goes. That's a little bit too dark. So we get that adjusted, value adjusted. Now let's see what's happening here. Will those sit between each other and give us now now it's moving a little bit too too much towards light. Get a little darker. A little bit darker and still darker. Now let's see. Now, now what's happening? Now we're feeling it. Okay, now it's leaning a little bit towards, a little bit more towards the dark. And your eyes will, after you do this for a while, you may need to take a break because your eyes will start messing with you after a while. Okay, now it's leaning a little bit more towards the dark. Still leaning a little, more, a little bit more to the light. Get that adjusted. So that you get a sort of a true value scale. That's pretty good. All right, now, and now we get the the, the uh, scale of the neutral that sits right here. And then we, once again, we go to the neutral, I mean, go to this neutral and add the white to it. Did I say that wrong? No. That's right. All right, let's see. Okay, needs to be darker. A little bit darker. There we go, right there. Nope, now it's leaning more towards this. Alright, still darker. Let's check it out now. Is that... that begins to feel a little bit too purple that means it doesn't have enough of the yellow in it so we'll get that adjusted all right now we feel pretty much pretty much a a gradation that goes from the darkest dark of the lightest light of that neutral area and then goes from the darkest dark of light of light of each extremes the next step then is to do the sections in between. I'm going to do the darkest dark and the lightest light of the sections and then let you fill in the rest because you will follow the same thing. So here's the deal on that. This is mid-intensity on the cool side or on the purple side, meaning that the intensity will be slightly neutralized, that purple will be slightly neutralized. This is the mid-intensity on the yellow side, which means that the yellow will be slightly neutralized but that it will still be uh, yellow. We'll still be able to call it yellow, but it will be a warm, neutral yellow. All right, so we very easy uh, to go between these two. And what I need here is for it to be more purple. It'll be hard to see here. I'll pull this over here. It's getting to be a messy palette, so it's going to be really hard to see. Uh, and it is hard to see in, in the darkest dark. So we sort of, it's sort of a crapshoot. You sort of guess. You want that to feel purplish. Yep, it does feel purplish, but be slightly neutral. Which means I added that neutral to it. And then over here, pull some of that out. You want it to feel slightly yellow, but to have some... Uh, you want it to be slightly yellow, but neutralized. But it's very difficult to see. So let's see if I can... Yeah, you won't be able to see that. Yeah, so 
so you can kind of wing it on this. Because in that dark, it's dark. It's kind of, you know, it's, it's sort of like splitting hairs to to, uh, to to get that. But it's really interesting how uh, in a painting, um, in the very, very deep shadows, if you do those shadows in the warm, it's going to feel right where, where if you make them too cool, it won't feel right. So it will be important to you to sort of sense the difference between the cooler, very, very stream dark over here and the, and the warmer, very, very stream dark over here. I'm going to go into the lightest light, which will be easier to see. Now be sure to get the brush cleaned out really, really good for that because um, it would be easier to control the values. So, <clears throat> do I have enough of the lightest light um, of each of those? There we go. So, um, let's just pull right over here and be sure be sure that I have the same value as I have right here. All right. Now, what's what am I, what am I trying to do here? There we go. This is that. What I want is this lightest light to be a slightly neutralized purple. So I'll go down into my Hansi yellow light and add just a little bit of Hansi yellow light into that. And let's see. I need to feel it the same degree. No, I need to read it. I need to read it as a purple. I need to read it as a purple that is slightly neutral. Gets a little bit more of the purple in there. Um, that got a little bit dark, so I need to control that value too, which is the uh, relationship. Yeah, that's got to be lighter. Control that value. That's just uh, we'll just lighten it right here. Now you can see. You can see in the same value range, you can see that this is this is a very light purple, slightly neutralized. This is neutral, light purple, slightly neutralized, light purple, full, uh, full saturation. Then we'll go over and do the yellow the same way, where we have the yellow slightly neutralized. So in essence, all we're doing in these is pulling a little bit, or, or kind of mixing what we have here and here to fill into this block, uh, or here and here to fill in this block. So we go into the Hansi yellow light here, and, and the neutral, or we can add just a little bit of purple to it. Either way, it's going to give us the same thing. So we need, there we go, right there. Get some clean... Hansi yellow light. So we need a Hansi yellow light that's slightly neutral. Right here. There we go. You can tell. When you look at those, and we, we need to feel when doing this, we need to feel about the same degree, degree of neutrality between this and this and this and that. And I think we don't quite have the same degree of neutrality here. I think we would have this one just a little bit more slightly neutral. So I'm going to make a little bit of an adjustment there so that the chart reads right. So I'll just go in and throw just a little bit more of this in there. Here we go. I think I'll do that a little bit differently. Just hold on one moment here. Let's pull some of this in here and create a new... Oh, that's the other thing when you're doing studies like this, that you're, if your palette gets all uh, confused like mine is, you may have to create some new color areas in order to keep the color pure. And uh, so that's what happened right there. But this is a good idea. Uh, in order for the chart, in order for the study or your experiment to be valid, these things need to be correct. So that means this is this is uh, this needs to be just a little bit more this neutral neutral neutralized. It's a lower. It's a it's a light purple lower intensity that needs to read as a light purple low intensity. There we go. That's a little bit better right there. So we have same uh, similar degree of of um, in high intensity or high saturation to completely neutral 
and this should split the difference in between. Same thing over here. High saturation, high intensity, completely neutral split, neutral split the difference here. Now this is as far as I'm going to take the chart because you can continue that now. You're going to do the same thing on each value level where you have, you have a lower intensity or lower saturation purple right here. This is in between these two. You'll have a lower saturation of the mid-light yellow here by mixing these two and so on as you go up. Hope you enjoyed this quick tip. If you have questions or a suggestion for a quick tip, leave us a comment right down here in the YouTube comment box. And take a trip over to dyingmice.com and look at all the things we have there for you, including full-length video tutorials. And while you're there, sign up for our newsletter so you'll always be informed of our latest adventures. And thanks for watching.